Welcome everybody back to Friar Talk. Today we are recording a the same night that Wanzo was traded, but we're talking about some Jay Cronenworth rumors. So, you know, we went from one topic that's not that fun to another topic that's not that fun because Jay Cronenworth is potentially on the trade block. Now, maybe you think I bring that up because I'm like, oh, I want to keep Jay Cronenworth. No, it's because I don't think Jay Cronenworth is tradable. And I think the fact that the report comes out, Jake Cronenworth is on the trade block is, is almost laughable because of his contract. So let's get into it. Isaac, you kind of started out. You said you see one team as a, at least in your opinion, that like just off the top of your head, that makes sense. And you don't really think that it makes much other sense or there's really going to be any other type of trade. Who is that team? What are your thoughts on if Jake Cronenworth is actually traded? Quick thing before I jump into that. You know, I was just thinking off the top of my head right now. Like, damn, I'm really tired of this, right? And then I thought of that one video or whatever it is where the girl goes, I'm tired, Grandpa. I think it's in holes. And the grandpa goes, well, that's too damn bad. And this is like me feeling like I'm tired, AJ. And AJ probably going, well, that's too damn bad. Um, Because in the past few years, now we've had one of the biggest collapses in MLB history, that being 2021. We've had Fernando Tatis Jr. falling off a motorcycle and not being able to start the season. Of course, they started the season very well, and they traded for Juan Soto. Hey, things were looking up. Next thing you know, right, Fernando Tatis gets popped for steroids. And then 2023 comes after a successful 2022. They showed up to the NLCS. Um, I kind of got off topic, but I'm just having fun. Um and then 2023 comes and you have one of the biggest disappointments in MLB history. One of the biggest disappointing seasons in MLB history. I'm tired. I'm tired. It, 2022 was fun. 2021 was not fun. 2023 was fun until like August when you finally realize like, oh my God, they're not coming back. Like they're not a good team. Because up until then I thought, oh, that'd be fine. They'll go like on a fat win streak and end up making the playoffs anyway. No, it wasn't. It was fun up until then. Um, didn't end up happening. So, I, yeah, again, I'm tired, man. And added to the list are all these bad contracts. Tired of bad contracts, tired of bad trades. Got to add another one to the list, and that is Jay Cronenworth. You got to add that one on top of what I think will eventually be added onto the list. This Juan Soto trade, the Eric Hosmer contract, the Xander Bogarts contract, um, other contracts that have been given the U Darvish Drew Pomeranz contract, the U Darvish contract, all these contracts that have just been given out. And um, I mean, shoot, the Austin Nola trade, right? We're tired of, of all this mediocrity of this lackluster return. And here we are again talking about another player who, hey, he was great to start. 2020, he was on pace for a four war. 2021, four war. 2022, four war. But how many times have we said it? He put up those stats at, a, at his best position. You signed a guy and you moved him off of his best position and he puts up his worst season in his career. It's no coincidence there. I don't think there's a coincidence there. Hey, maybe he still doesn't do that good at second base. Maybe his hitting stats are the same, but he has more value because middle infield is not really a position where you need to have the craziest production at the plate. Maybe he actually has a 2-3 war. Probably a two. Not that good, but it's better. Um, but that does not cut out the excuse that Jake Cronenworth, Jake Cronenworth was not a good baseball player last year. He was a very lackluster first baseman. And, hey, defensively, it didn't look that bad. The eye test, he passed it. But then you go on, like, the Savant page, and it was like, yeah, he was an okay first baseman. Or, hey, damn, he was a pretty bad first baseman. I didn't think he was that bad. I thought he was okay. The eye test, I thought he passed it. But it doesn't matter. At first base, you're supposed to have a guy there that's putting up oh, at least over a 750 OPS, preferably like a 780 plus, right? Getting 20 plus home runs. Jay Cronenworth doesn't do that, right? Jay Cronenworth is a, at best, hopefully, 750 hitter or 750 OPS hitter on a good, his one, you know, his 2020, what, 2021, he was almost at an 800, if not at an 800. But Jay Cronenworth is not going to blow the roof off with power. He's going to have his really hot stretches, but he's always going to play great defense. Now, again, he earned that contract extension as a second baseman. 
You moved him off second. You moved him to first, and his value declined pretty, I would say, pretty significantly. Um, I don't know what you guys' views are, but I would say his value declined significantly. Now, the only team to me that makes sense as a trade partner is the Miami Marlins. I don't know what their need is for first base, but they have been outspoken in saying we are willing to give up a few pieces of our pitching staff, that being Cabrera. I forgot the other two, but I know the main one was Cabrera. To me, that is the only trade partner that makes sense. Otherwise, keep them. Teach them. The thing with Jay Cronenworth is now you got to find a different way to up his value. How are you going to make that contract worth it? How are you going to make that contract not look as bad? Well, the first step is you're going to take him off first base. Maybe not permanently, but you're going to take him off the permanent first base. Uh, you're going to take the permanent first baseman tag off of him. He's not going to be that anymore. He can't be. Otherwise, it's a bad contract. Other than that, what you can do, you can have him play first base sometimes, but you also got to sprinkle in some second base. You also got to sprinkle in some shortstop and something that's not really being discussed. You got to teach the man how to play some outfield. You have one outfielder now that you traded Juan Soto and Trent Grisham. You have one outfielder. Teaching another guy how to play outfield doesn't sound like a bad idea. Hey, maybe he won't be the best out there. Juan Soto wasn't a good defender either. Not that the bat of Jake Cronenworth will make up for the defense, but Juan Soto wasn't a great defender. I think Cronenworth can be a better outfielder than Soto can be. Is that bold? I don't think it is. Um, but essentially what you saw our two-hour north of us rival do was they taught Chris Taylor how to play some outfield. Um, they've taught they taught Gavin Lux how to play some outfield, even though he wasn't good at it. They've taught different infielders how to play outfield and different outfielders how to play infield, upping the value of that player. So in order to get the most value out of this contract, you have to teach Jake Cronenworth how to play. He already knows how to play three infield positions. You need to teach him how to play. I mean, yeah, he can play third probably. Um, but you need to teach him how to play the corners next year, the corners, that being the outfield. If you teach him that, you have a very valuable contract because you're going to be able to plug him in almost anywhere every day. And I think that's very valuable. I think that immediately gives them another war or two, minimum. So it can be a lot because you also want to get his bat back up to where it was in 2021 and parts of 2022. You want to get him back to that as well. But you got to understand, he's not a first baseman. He's not going to give you the plate production that a first baseman can give you. He will give you the plate production a second baseman can give you. Yes, for sure. That's where... He made his money, but now you can't really do much. I know he's potentially on the table. I don't think a Jake Cronenworth trade is very likely. This is more like a, oh, no shit, you want to trade him. You realize that you shouldn't have gave him that contract, and now you're now you're backtracking. person you should be doing that with, Matt will agree, because he brought it up before we started, so I'll give this credit to Matt. That should be Xander Bogarts that you backtrack with. Not, I mean, sure, Jake Cronenworth too, but that should be Xander Bogarts. Um so I don't know, man. I, I, I don't think it's very likely, but in the event that he is a Padre for the foreseeable future, permanent first baseman is not his thing. You need to get him out of there. Yeah, dude, 100%. And also, I, I want to show this contract real quick just to show how crazy it was that they were like, sure, let's give it to him. All right, guys, <laughs> spot track and – as you see, I don't have ad block because, I don't know, I'm like a psychopath or something. Not sure why. But arbitration this year, 30 years old. Arbitration next year, 31 years old. 7 mil, 11 mil. Did they save any money by doing this? No. No, they didn't. Maybe a, a little bit. Probably This is probably more than what he would have gotten arbitration, I would guess. Because he came out. Same time as Grish. Grish made five mil this year. Uh, interesting. Um, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Look at this, bro. Like, this made no sense. And we weren't, like, super against the contract when it came out. Like, we weren't like, oh, yeah, this is a great deal or this is a bad deal. We were like, this is weird. And my thought was like, so I guess this is the Padres basically saying, we have an inf like we believe that we can just keep shelling out money, which I don't know if that's what they did, but that was like almost like their thought of this is like, 
and we want to pay the guys that we want to pay our guys. And I was like, if that's what you're trying to set, that that's what you're trying to do, that's cool, I guess. But like, I was also like, it's weird because he didn't need to get extended. And it seemed reckless. And now it looks so much worse. And now that the Padres have Xander Bogarts and it's been floated around that he should play first base, that is insane. That is, we just did it, bro. We just did the same thing where we moved Cronenworth to first. If you do that to Xander Bogarts, I cannot take people decision making like anyone that's in a decision making position in the Padres organization serious. If that's what they're going to go through with, I cannot take them serious, bro. Because that is that is wild to to do that to make that mistake. Look at it and go, okay, let's try it again. What we just saw right now, and we're going to talk about this in the future because you know there's a lot of rumors and stuff, so it's not really the best time. But now, especially that Juan Soto just got traded. We're going to talk about moving Fernando Tatis to center field. Well, more that Grisham got traded. We're going to talk about moving Fernando Tatis to center field. Why? Because it increases his value. Because Fernando Tatis can put Mike Trout level. He can put Mike Trout level w- war up in center field. Mookie Betts just got moved to second base full time. Why? Because he's going to have be one of the most valuable players at that position. Not one of. He's going to be the most valuable players at that position. Why do you think the Astros lineup was so good for all those years? Because Altuve plays second base, and they can plug in guys all over the field in positions that are hitter-friendly, like a first base, like DH, like corner outfield, and they can put up stupid numbers. Like, their offense just gets so so much better when you fill these spots that usually don't have great hitters with great hitters. So that's what you have to do. Like, you can't waste a, a right field spot on a guy that can't hit. You can't waste a first base spot on a guy that can't hit. You can't waste a DH spot. And last year, the Padres did that. One with Cronenworth and one with Matt, with Matt Carpenter. That's probably the reason they don't make the playoffs last year. Like, Let's be real. That is probably the reason. Because their DH, did he have a 600 OPS, bro? I tried to delete it from my mind as much as I could. I, he might not have. He was that bad. Maybe under 650. Cronenworth had a 690. That's so bad. Like, you're not taking advantage of those positions. And then Garrett Cooper came in, and Garrett Cooper was a way better first baseman than Cronenworth because he actually put up offensive numbers. So, yeah, Cronenworth has to be a second baseman or he has to be a utility player. For all the trade rumors, because I know that this is what we're talking about. We didn't even talk about the trade rumors at all. Basically, they were like, hey, Cronenworth, the Potters are willing to trade Cronenworth. And we're like, yeah, we know. I bet. Wow, what a surprise. Um but basically, like my thought is, there's this is what I actually think. Because I don't think that they think they're going to be able to move him. I maybe they are, but I I doubt it. I think that the thought is, Manny's going to come back. Manny's going to DH, maybe play some first base. We'll see. Maybe do a Bryce Harper type deal. Elbow surgery, right? Not going to be able to throw that much. And then you can move Kim to third. You can have Bogarts at second, and you can have Cronworth at, or Bogarts at short. Cronworth at second. Then. You can build up value in Cronenworth, and they're not going to do it. But if they were smart, if Xander Bogarts has a hot start and they aren't that good, they should try to trade Xander Bogarts, even if they don't get that much for him. That's my thought. They're not going to do it. I I would be so shocked if they do it. But that's what I think is going to happen, and I think that's what this is. It's trying to build up some value in Cronenworth so they can trade him this season. And, like, if he's a decent second baseman, the contract actually might not be that bad, even if he's not the best hitter. Like, But he has to be a second baseman, and now he can't be a second baseman in San Diego. So that's the problem, at least long term. He can do it for a little bit at the beginning. So that's what I think this is more about, and I don't really think that he's going to get traded right now. I think the rumors are kind of eh. But yeah, that's my thoughts. Isaac, you got anything else on, on Chrome Zone? Uh, <clears throat> For anyone who watched the last video, it was 8.56 on December 6th when we traded Juan Soto. Uh, Not the official timestamp, but that was when we were recording. Um, It is now 9.39, and I will be soaking in the pain of trading Juan Soto the rest of the night. Um, As far as Jay Cronenworth goes, no, I got nothing else. I'm torn. I'm conflicted. I want him to be a Padre because I think he could bounce back, but I also understand wanting to get some of that money off the books to go get I don't know, uh, starting pitcher, more starting pitching. I know A.J. Preller just said that he wants a guy that can fill the eighth or ninth inning role. Um, but now we need we need outfielders. We need 
we I, I still think we need some starting pitching to be honest but um that's i think that's a given so we'll see how it goes i don't i don't know if jake cronenworth is the guy to move we all know who the guy to move is but it's not very likely so i understand um why he's being discussed yep all right guys well sorry to really talk about the trade rumors too much we're just kind of I mean, we've been talking for a while here and it's almost 1 a.m for me so i'm about to go to sleep um, but yeah, we want to talk about Cronenworth, want to discuss him. We're going to talk about some other stuff. Probably going to be a lot more rumors coming out soon, so we'll break those down as well. But as you've seen, we've been posting a little bit more now on some decent schedules. Chase isn't with us today, but Chase is probably going to be back a little bit. Uh, he's doing like some vacation and working like where well, he's working his life away, basically. Um, uh, not really. But... And he's going to Vegas. Congrats to him. I hope he's – we told him he's got to come back with enough money for us to buy the Padres. Yeah, so he's gonna put it on red and just like keep riding it on red and roulette until until he's he's able to purchase the share, so we can fire AJ Preller. <laughs> um, so we don't have these contracts anymore, man, and we get to keep guys like Juan Soto. We get to keep Ethan Solace. You ready? We're gonna keep Tatis and Solace. Crazy idea. Um, but yeah, all right, guys, that's gonna do it. Have a great night. We're probably going to post this in the morning. So have a, have a good day. Have a good Thursday. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk to you all soon. And uh, we'll be getting some more videos out this week and next week. See you all. Peace.